times I'm feeling like Michael. I'm feeling like Michael. Taking a stand, creating a plan, and beating the cycle. Beating the cycle. We got a whole lot of what we gotta do. We gotta do. Give me the raw, give me the real, just give me the truth. Give me the truth. Start a conversation, then let the world debate it. Breath of fresh air coming through just like ventilation. And no boy, let me tell you about the squad. A dream team, so you know they coming hard. Coming hard. Now first up, let me tell you about Jay. You know he wise, man. That boy got knowledge for days. Check out his mind. Then we got Sean coming through like Thanos. Keep him in line. He's a quiet storm, but don't get it twisted. You see the ground. And next up, we gotta talk about Nate. You know she slay. She got the brains and the beauty plus strength to keep you straight. And last but not least, we got Nostradamus. He's the voice of the people, so he'll keep it popping. My squad gon' keep it 100, and that's all facts. They're here to spark the conversation. Now you debate now that. You debate that. Welcome to another episode of Debate That, where we discuss relationships, pop culture, social issues, and much, much more. My name is Jay, and Sean and Nay are too good for us. They out here making all the money, so they like, we ain't doing no show today. But it's cool. We have a special guest in the building, and I met this gentleman through work, actually, and um, we had conversations. We picked each other's brain. He's a very intelligent uh gentlemen and i just enjoy the conversations that we have so welcome everyone will to the show hey everybody go ahead and introduce mm-hmm. yourself will tell tell the people about you hey uh will worley uh african-american 28 year old man in america so plethora of life experiences some good some bad here to uh, share my opinion with you good folks. Uh, thank you all for uh, inviting me on the show. Uh, you have one of the best intro songs in America of any podcast. And <laughs> I, I mean, Breakfast Club, anybody, it's the, one of the best songs I've ever heard as far as an intro song. Uh, too bad we couldn't have uh, Sean and Nay here uh, to hear what they have to say about these topics, but I'm sure that, you know, we'll, we'll get it, we'll get it done. So, real quick about that um, intro, man. That that intro is fire. I remember when we got it and I listened to it. I was like, Ooh. "Made that? Who cousin made that? That's somebody cousin. That's a cousin song. That's a oh, you sent that to the studio and said, hey, cuz, I need you. I need one of those.' So first <laughs> off, the person that made it, his name is Anthony Mabels, and he got he got other tracks out there that's dope. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Dude got bars. So I thought y'all had Joyner Lucas make y'all stuff. What? I, yeah. I know y'all ain't have Joyner Lucas make an intro song. Nah, man. Bars. Yeah, bars. bars. Yes, bars. But anyway, Nostradamus, what we got for today? Our question today is, is America too sensitive? Hell yes. I'm going to say, um, but what do you think, Will? Context. <laughs> context is key. Context is key. But, so, uh, what, you, offset, uh, what you think? What you think? What you got? Um, I think on the on the onset, what we see day to day social media, the news, you might be able to just jump to that conclusion and say yay. But I think you know you delving into it and and really kind of. Uh, contextualizing that question gives you a better, I think, and then in, in, in answering that, you will touch more people if you contextualize the question more. But you know, on the offset, some people could say that. You know, I think a lot of people have that opinion. So here, here's here, my thing is, like, I don't think I don't know that people can truly be honest anymore without, and I think that has to do with social media, because prior to this. You didn't have that reach like you have for everybody to be so up in arms when somebody says something. But if that's how a person feel about something, who am I to say that person's wrong? What would be better for me is just to have a conversation with a person to see why they why why they are thinking that way, because everybody has different experiences. So I can't. I can't I can't say a person's wrong. E- even the people that are up in arms about stuff, I can't say you're wrong. You know what I mean? That's their experience. That's how they feel. But the understanding has to be there. And then what's the logic behind that that way of thinking? Is more the 
more the, the the idea that I had, but on the surface, because of social media, I think, yeah, may, maybe people have gotten too sensitive because you can't even have conversations anymore. It's just people just don't talk anymore. So you think social media made people sensitive, made people in America sensitive? Like when we talk about is America too sensitive, are we talking about the people? Are we talking about America as a country? Are we talking about leadership? Like maybe we're talking about all of them, but you know, let's kind of break that down. So right now we're talking about people being too sensitive, like the people in America. You go ahead, Will. I like I would like to say that when we talk about America, we always talking about people. At the base, when we say America, we talk about American citizens, individuals. Now these individuals get funneled up into organizations and and in different groups of individuals but at the, at, at the base level we talk about each individual american but then as we you know come together as co-workers as uh people in different community service organizations church members people that live inside our communities you know the person that lives right next door to you in, in your apartment or home or whatever um is that person too sensitive or is the the, the community as a whole becoming too sensitive uh, that you know that's uh, well I, I i to give you an example right i remember i used to my 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 wife called me captain save a hole right because <laughs> you were saving them <laughs> captain save a hole because every because w- whenever i saw a woman and they're in some type of situation my wife would look at me and be like oh you about to put your cape on so it was one of those things where I got a mother, I got a sister, I got aunts, right? And I didn't want to see a woman on the side of the road with a tire flat or whatever. But the way things are going now, I was just like, I don't know whether to ask and like, see if you need help or am I going to get cussed out or, you know, whatever. I can do it myself type deal, things like that. So I just quit. I just stopped. I just stopped helping because I don't know who I'm going to offend. Like, if I go try to help, but you know, I think it's just one of those things where it gets so far to one and on one side that you that people typically put themselves in a situation. Mm, I think you, you, gotta, you gotta allow for you gotta allow for other people's opinions. That's so the only I'm, way to I'm I'm trying to understand. Are you saying that? your wife was too sensitive so you stopped saving these hoes or were you saying or or are you saying are you saying that you don't like the other people might be too sensitive if you help them out like you know clarify that a bit so that was just an example like you know women and independence and i don't need your help for anything and so it, it's it, I, I've I've held the door for women sometimes. It's like I don't need you to hold the door. Well, damn. I was just trying to be uh, polite at that. It wasn't. It, it it was just holding the door because you're coming. I don't want to let the door go and it is closing right in your face. I'm here. I want to hold the door for you. But there's situations like that and the stuff that you're hearing and seeing now is just. I, it's just you don't know what you're going to say or do that will offend somebody. So I just don't do nothing. It's just like, whatever. If I don't know you, it just kind of, I just kind of, it just depends on where I'm at, what the situation is, if I'm going to extend that help. And no, it wasn't, it wasn't saying my wife was being too sensitive. She just always making fun of me. It's just me looking at these situations like, I just don't I just don't want to offend somebody. So you don't even I don't even say certain things to people like complimenting people like, oh, man, you know, I'm a foot guy. So it's like, oh, you got pretty feet. And then I don't want it to come to a thing of why are you looking at my feet? Because it literally gets to that point. Like people really get offended or feel some type of way about things. Yeah. But how were you opening the door? How were you holding the door? Because there is a difference. Right. <laughs> Hold up. Where, where you going? <laughs> you, I'm imagining it like when you like open the door like the mask. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Here's what I'm saying, right? 
and, and <laughs> that's funny. But when you, if you're walking into the door, if you're walking into a building, and you open the door, and you go inside, and you 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 hold the door open, right? Mm-hmm. So somebody can just walk in behind you mm-hmm. versus if you open the door and you stay outside and let them walk in before you. There's a difference with that because, you know, if you open the door and you stay looking forward and you let somebody walk in behind you, you're being polite. But if you open the door and you let them walk in first, you're trying to see that dookie. <laughs> so I can see why. She might get offended if you open the door for her and let her walk in first. You should have just gone ahead and walked in instead of being a gentleman. <laughs> I, when I hold doors, I t- if, a, if a woman's coming and I'm going to hold a door, I'm typically on the outside. I'm not trying to look at her behind. It's just, I'm just going to let you go first. So I, I don't particularly care to look. It, uh, she might be perceiving it. And then maybe so. So what you're saying is she's probably too sensitive or overthinking it, and that creates the sensitivity. Because I'm looking at the booty. You <laughs> might not be looking, but I'm looking. In that situation, I it, it, I just don't care. You got to think. My wife is shaped nicely. I it, it ain't it ain't too many that's just gonna beat that. So I it, the comparison is is whatever. You can go, you just go through the door. Just thank you and go through the door. Especially, especially, I mean, you shouldn't expect, I guess you shouldn't expect to thank you, but shoot, you know what? When people don't say thank you, I just feel like pulling them back out, close the door, and then I go about my way. Like, you can't say thank you. I, I don't have to do this. I'm doing this because I want to be polite. At least a thank you. But to each his own, whatever. You do so, it. So you that, do it. That, that's good. So if you hold the door open for somebody and let, let's get off of this, just holding it for women. But if you just hold the door open for somebody and they walk through and they don't say thank you and you get upset, are you too sensitive? Nah, I don't. I, I just go about my way. I don't say nothing, but at least be polite. I was polite enough to hold the door. Just be polite. I've never held the door for a dude and the dude walked through and didn't say thank you. I have happened to me just yesterday. Yeah, just yesterday. Damn, I don't know about that guy, but every young, food, young every guy that goes through the door is like appreciate it, thank you, whatever. Because you know, guy. it's usually for a woman. You usually typically may not hold it for a dude, but uh, if he's close, I'm gonna I'm hold the door open for. Him. He walks through, he say thank you. But I ain't tripping. It's just damn. You could have said thank you, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna throw a whole fit about it. But in my head though. I'll be wanting to pull their behind back out, close the door, and keep it moving. So mm-hmm. how how'd you feel, Will, when, when that happened yesterday? How do you feel in general when that happens? <laughs> uh, Jit is a colloquial term that we use for young people, younger people than me. So when I say Jit, it's not derogatory. But I looked at Jit like, bro, <laughs> he was he was a younger guy. Uh the, it was a it was an older female, older than me, I could tell, Caucasian, and then a younger Caucasian male. And I held the, the door for them as I was leaving the establishment. They were walking in. The lady, hey, thank you. The dude, you know, kept kept it straight and, you know, went about his business. Uh, I think ultimately things like that say more about that person than you. Uh, but in general when it comes to sensitivity that guy might have been very sensitive if i would have challenged him about what he did and i think that that dynamic is what we're talking about is the the way that people behave due to their particular life experiences and ultimately how we interact with these people with different life experiences from us some of these people are more tolerant for things that we ain't tolerant for some of these things some of these people are more sensitive of things that we ain't sensitive of and us growing up i'm I'm assuming all of us at least 25 and up holding the door for a woman was you know just something you did something you you, your mom told you to do and jason to your uh example the reason we got on the holding the door uh being the captain save a hoe uh, (laughs) that was your life experience 
you know, whatever life experiences you had told you when you see women that need that, you know, seemingly need help to provide that and not in a sexual, not with some sexual, you know, motive behind it, but just, you know, just that's just what you want to you, you want to provide and put out to the world. But in this day and age and in the time before, hey, it was it was accepted. It was respect on both sides. Thank you for the help. Thank you for letting me help you. Bye. Bye. But now, uh, as things change, people's uh, and new generations have new understandings about the world. Things that used to be not an issue are now an issue. Uh, a lot of and so many aspects of our lives are changed based on that. You know, you know. I think sensitivity goes right. This question goes right into council culture, which might be an American thing exclusively not exclusively American but American originated um yeah so you know and then back to the question about the guy you know it is it is what it is um I ain't gonna challenge him because he might have a panic attack on me and you know got to pull out his inhaler and I ain't want his grandma or whoever she was to you know be mad at me about it so hey and and so for those of you watching who may not know we actually have an episode of cancel culture. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're not going to get in cancel culture too much here, but if you guys are interested on those perspectives, go back and watch that episode. So, so go ahead, Jay. So it, it, here's one. It's, 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 it's tricky because some stuff you hear, you just like, this can't be real. So on online, there was one chick that was like, if you if you don't date, you know, um, I, I guess fat isn't the politically correct word. So if you don't if you don't date overweight women, then you're you are fat. It's not fat shaming. It fat was discriminatory. Or discriminatory. You, you, you're, you're fat phobia. Mm, phobic, yeah. fat phobic. That's what she fat said. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're fat phobic. Like, why not just? Is broke phobic a thing? Can I be uh, scared of broke? No, it, it, no it, <laughs> it, it's it's a thing now because somebody became so sensitive by just lose weight because it's not healthy. So as if he can't if he can't buy you a Birkin, Birkin, throw him back to the streets. Broke phobic. It's an, I, as a hey. as a not as a dude who can't afford a Birkin, I'm feeling <laughs> real discriminated against. I'm about to be I out here up in arms. Just, I don't oh want to be God. on the streets. I don't want to be on the streets. So y'all sensitive. Y'all being yeah. sensitive. Basically, like you know, for me, if I can't if if a chick is like, if you can't afford a Birkin, then it's no need to be with you. I don't care. Like, I guess you ain't for me. You know what I mean? Like, I, and first off. First off, for some random chick, I'm not spending that much money on no random chick at all. Your wifey said, I want a Birkin. My wife? Wifey. That's a different story. But me buying one is I also a different it. story. And huh? I can't afford it. Yeah, I can't. I, I'm not. I, I'm, I can't afford it. Right? Uh, the, how much a Birkin bag cost anyway? Rappers talk about it, so I can't afford it. I should. <laughs> as, 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 as Nostradamus always tells me, he was like, "I ain't, if if I'm looking at something, that means I'm about to I'm about to buy it. Like I'm about to get it. So for me, I ain't about to buy that. There's no need for me to even look at that. <laughs> it's it's not even on my radar. So he was one of those kids who couldn't touch nothing in that store. Oh me? Yeah. Oh for sure. You couldn't touch nothing. <laughs> my mom gave me the speech. <laughs> if you break it, you no. buy it. Don't touch, don't ask, cause you ain't getting. Y'all fill in the blank. But that that that's exactly what it was. I remember, you know, just her pulling out the wad of money and being like, "Oh, I ain't got no money," but she pulled out this wad of money. But now I get it, cause <laughs> I, I know I know what that's about now. But but back to the fat phobic man. That's like everything is a thing. So you, you can't do anything or just being honest. Like, so to be honest with somebody and just be like, yo, you're too big. You need to lose weight. Like that's, that could be a problem later on. Are you it, saying you would date this young lady if she loses weight? 
Well, well, not not hypothetically. If you were a single male, right, right, yeah, was, right. No, yeah, but. but you gotta you gotta think about it. When 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 you're if, if you're single and you're out here on this market, something has to be a, appealing to you, right? So if you're not if something doesn't catch your attention, because yeah, th- there's probably people who may not be the most attractive, but as you get to know them, right, over time they become more attractive because you get to see who they are. But in certain situations, bro, there's there's nothing you can do about that. That's just that's what it is, and you just know I'm not doing that. But if if a person was smaller or, or in in better shape or something like that, then that could change how that whole situation goes. It's mostly what you see at first. So I know you guys said you guys talked about social media earlier, right? And and I, I'm sure social media amplifies everything. But do you guys think the reason like what do you guys think the reason people are or may be too sensitive now? Do you think, in my opinion, what if it's because I've always had a voice, but it wasn't that loud. But now the way that the world is and the way that my reach can potentially be with the platforms that are just so readily at our hands, it makes my voice loud and it appeals to other people that may feel the same way and maybe that's the reason why we mm-hmm. might be perceiving the sensitivity level is high because now there's more people that feels a certain way that can make it known yes yes well well i also think it goes into you know triggers and certain things just being accountable for like i don't want to be accountable for certain things so i'd rather push back uh so yeah like that big lady don't want to lose weight i don't want to lose weight but so because i don't want to lose weight you shouldn't judge me because but you're going to be judged on anything but yet and still to to not uh nostradamus's point we're talking about somebody saying something and then there being echoes it wasn't it's not just the fact that this young lady feels this way is that it's other young ladies that feel this way there are other people that feel this way as a whole and with social media, you putting out your something that you want the world to be more tolerant of, that you essentially are very sensitive of, you you get a thousand people to agree with you. And it adds fuel to your fire, or it adds fuel to that conversation. That well, wasn't that conversation. Right. No. Well, right. uh, you still need to lose weight. Well, okay, let's 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 maybe not the weight thing, because you know some people you know, they they not going to the, the, the weight that they or the way that they are shaped is going to be the way they're shaped as much working out as you're going to do. That's pretty much that's you. You can look in your whole genealogy. and Everybody's been shaped just like that. I don't know. You know, I don't know. They had this conversation about South African women, Mazani ethnic group, differently shaped. Uh, if they if, if there was a thing that was called big bones. But not in necessarily, and not in a bad way. These people are tra- very attractive. But if they were, if there's such thing as big bone, these people might be along that group. But uh, along that, that line. But at the end of the day, that's natural for them. But and I, I, in, here's hmm. a question for them, right? If they're genetically disposed to be that way, right? Then <clears throat> I, I would, I would wonder. Um, I would want to know health wise. How do they how do they stack up against everyone else being genetically exposed to look that way? So if they're eating and they're doing certain things, then their body genetically holds on to certain things and and keeps it because of how their DNA is. But I don't I don't know that to be true. I'm just wondering. That would be a question that I would want to know. You know, just knowing what I, the little I do know about evolution and dominant traits. For somebody, for you to have a particular body shape and it to work out for you generation after generation after generation, there has to be some level of health. Well, uh, well, let's be clear, too. Just because you're big don't mean you're unhealthy. Oh, yeah, right. 100%. That's and that's, right. and that's essentially what I'm saying. These people who have – Samoan people are are naturally very big people. It's it's only in America when you're big you're unhealthy because yeah. of all the – More time you know, than not because right, – yeah, Unhealthy yeah, yeah. foods and stuff and – because sumos, look at sumos. You talk about Samoans, but look at sumos be 
four, five hundred, six hundred pounds, but they healthy as an ox. And that, and it's and it's and then I mean that maybe not just America, the developed world. I heard something in the UK about um, the government imposing some type of disincentive to uh, fast food manufacturers and snack manufacturers uh, to get the caloric intake for children because it's very high in our school systems down. So I, I don't know if it's something about them switching to the food or lowering the amount of sugar that they could have or so, something of that nature because childhood obesity over there, just like over here, is very prominent. Uh, a lot of a lot of first world first world countries are, are dealing with that. I think similarly, a lot of first world countries are dealing with hypersensitivity from you know their their, their citizens because so, other countries got real issues. So it is say that all these issues aren't real, but when you're just trying to stay alive, that's a real issue. And, and so I'm glad you bring up the idea of issues, right? And you you know you brought up government, but when we speak about sensitivity, whose issue is it? Is it a me issue? Is it a you issue? You know what I mean? Am I being am I too sensitive for you, or you know for because you have an opinion, mm. or you know? Are you just being insensitive to to maybe the way I feel, not you know, not taking it seriously? You know, whose issue is it? But at what point can you be honest? Mm. So e even if it's a even if even if it's a sensitivity issue, because my thing comes back to being honest. You don't grow unless you're honest. My wife comes and asks me, "Do I look fat in these pants?" Every man knows what to say, right? But to be honest. If she does look fat in the pants, I should tell her that. But if I say, oh, babe, you, you're teeter tottering. And then that could be something where she, it, it, she may get sensitive about it. Mm. Don't ask me. It, it's, it's one of those things. You want me to tell you something so it can make you feel better, but it doesn't help you. I, I think I got a good point to this. <clears throat> And this might get me thrown under the black Twitter bus, but I ain't on social media, so uh, <laughs> y'all gonna have to tell me. Somebody got to text me or something and tell me that they thought they're already gonna be over you for saying that you can't afford a Birkin, so you ain't even got to. Oh yeah, I'm already on the streets. I'm already on the streets. So let yeah. me go ahead and go to the, to the sewers. I'm about to be a rat man, the, the sewer man after this one. Because uh, all they heard was he can't afford a Birkin. He broke, not realizing. One of those bags can cost like ten grand. So why would I spend ten grand on a bag or more? To show so, love to my wife. If I really love her, I will buy ten thousand dollars worth of a bag for her. Duh. Yeah, all, all they hear is, "Oh, he broke. <laughs> he broke." Well, let this broke boy speak. Broke boy joy. But um, uh, um, uh, I know that in these times, especially during uh coronavirus, bringing up all of these racial tensions and. All of these uh, situations to the forefront of America and not only African-American homes, uh, uh, but every every home in America at some level was talking about what's going on. Uh, the George Floyd situation, all that stuff. Uh, even prior to that, Trayvon Martin, I was in college when Trayvon Martin happened in FAMU and, and, and that was right down the, uh, down the road in Orlando. Since then, I've progressively heard this tone of seclusion from african americans about safe spaces places that embrace us which yeah i'm signing me up for i went to an hbcu that's that's what i'm here for I, but at the exact same time i also hear um i don't want to hear the 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 mindsets the opinions i don't want to be around people that don't believe what i believe in if you're not fighting the fight, I fight the way I fight it. It's given, uh, I feel like times, especially in this last past year, has given a lot of people the right in that sense to uh, go into vacuums and these echo chambers where only they only hear their opinion. Uh, I think that that is a, a result of hypersensitivity and not necessarily the healthiest thing for a united community a, a united uh church a united america as a whole um and i don't like when i hear my my fellow brothers african-american brothers and sisters have that particular 
mindset of seclusion per se uh, with no room for tolerance for anybody else's opinions or growth because at the exact same time when you when you can uh, just shun the opposing party and, and cast all of that that type of stuff away you don't really uh leave the opportunity for growth on either side really for you to understand more from where they're coming from or vice versa and you know we go from united states to the states to your house and every, I'm, yeah. I'm, it's me versus everybody but yeah <laughs> No, I think I think that's a good point. And I guess we both gonna get thrown under the bus because you have to understand the other side. Like, like I like I told my sister one time before we was having a conversation, and I was like, I think I think I, people have heard this before. I'm sure people have heard have heard this before. But if you draw a six on the ground on one side, it's a nine, on the other side it's a six. So who's wrong? Right? Nobody's wrong. It's just based on where you're standing. So you have to listen to the other side and what they're saying. And that may not, that may not, um, that may not work for you in what you're doing, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it won't work for them. Now, some things are just, some things are just, I guess, morally wrong, right? When you're looking at it, some things are just morally wrong, but for some people it works. But what they have to do is talk to the other side so they can get a better understanding. Because if you've never been in, um, if you, if you, oh, perfect, perfect example. Like there's differences, right? So my son had a friend who house, when he went to go stay the night over, right? He, he spent the night over there. And then the next weekend or the next day or whatever it was, he came and spent the night at our house. Now, here's a difference. He stayed the night at his friend's house, who was white. They woke up. They had fruit for breakfast. So he came to our house, stayed the night, woke up the next morning. We had pancakes and grits and bacon and such. And he was like, oh, man, we just have fruit for breakfast. Like, he, I haven't had this. Now he's experienced the other side. But, you know, he was open to come and experience the other side to see what that's like. So then you have a better understanding. So then you can speak to certain topics because you do understand. So... Yeah, I've never been white before, but I do see how certain things happen for white people that don't happen for me. So I don't have to be white to to see that. But as a white person, you may have to be around black people to understand and experience certain things to understand what the difference is. So when you're up in arms and I'm mad and I'm upset about this or the whole George Floyd thing or just saying that he had drugs in the system, that's why he died. No, he died because somebody was kneeling on him. That's why he died. Mm, mm, mm. And people pick and choose when to be sensitive. People pick and choose when to be sensitive. Hypothetically, just like with that with that uh, young lady, what she was talking about as far as the fat phobic and all that stuff, Adele, Jennifer, and <laughs> Adele, Jennifer Hudson, all of these people who were known as fat celebrities and all of this, oh, she's She's the new, new, uh, um, uh, Lizzo. Yeah, Lizzo. Well, well, Lizzo ain't there yet. Hold on, wait, wait, where is she? She ain't where I'm at. But you have these people who came to our attention and our mindset and beloved in our hearts for the songs they sing, what they add to the world as the heavy set female actress or singer, so on and so forth. Over time, once that money started getting on you and you, you can afford a Birkin. You might be able to afford a green juice. You might be able to afford a a, 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 tr a physical trainer. You might, yo, yes, man, might start telling you, hey, you need to eat fruit in the morning instead of 10 bowls of grits because you ain't, 10 bowls of grits is already on you. You don't need to eat that. You need to, <laughs> to work, whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, these same people who used to be, uh, uh, you know, publicized for this are now publicized for being, Oh, look at her, her new body and her new figure. And uh, especially Adele, especially Adele. Adele was big. I, I never knew. I never knew Adele. <laughs> hey, he you what? Up, bro. Adele who sits in a chair every concert? $1,200 I, I seats, $1,200 seats. Sits on a stool, sings the songs, bye. Beyonce, $1,200 seats, but she dancing, gyrating for days. 
Hold up, hold up. When Adele first came out or Adele now? Adele 18 months ago. Oh. Then, then she goes down to Jamaica. Now she's in Jamaica hanging out with the Rastas, bobbing, wearing a bikini on the, on the beach. But hey, pick and choose when to be sensitive. Before, hey, accept me for who I am. Now I'm skinny, accept me for who I am. Uh, African Americans, when it comes to this seclusion mindset, and oh, I'm, I ain't do it, da, 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 whatever you play, and then it's the same thing that drives the black businesses. And hey, we need to uh, build up what we're doing, which we do. But you are playing yourself if there isn't any interaction with someone on the opposite side of you, somebody that votes differently from you, that votes not just differently, votes in opposition to what you vote for. Ultimately, as a black business owner, you can have all black uh, clientele or customers. You can have all black staff, uh, your lawyer, your CPA, all of that could be black. But at the end of the day, your money going to a white bank. There are a few black banks, but that's still a lower level bank. It ain't no, it's no regional banks that's out here where your money is being matriculated, being uh, used and uh, manipulated by your own people for that benefit. At the end of the day, it's ending up with somebody who you call your opposition that you on a regular day are too sensitive to interact with. But when it comes to that dollar, you right where you need to be because ultimately you, we are surrounded on all sides by other people than us you can play yourself all the time about what you what you will and won't do and who you will and won't do it with but for certain times you do pick and choose when to be sensitive no nah, that's that, that's a good point like that is so when it comes down to it do i think america's sensitive yes but I, I think how it got there even even when you're talking about politics and things like that like you have to, I watch Fox on purpose because I want to see the other side, but they'd be just as bad as MSNBC. Like it, it, everybody has a thing that they're just out of control about, right? And at the end of the day, mm. it's understanding the other side. Next level question. What's Is up? sensitivity by design? Is this hypersensitivity that we are experiencing by design? Yes. By, okay. By whose design? That's uh, answer that question. So here, here, I'm going to sound like this conspiracy theorist over here or whatever, but I, I think it's a thing of what I don't want people to unify. If people mm. unify, I have a problem. So mm. I keep, I keep issues going. So you have this station talking about this, this station talking about this. You have this fight. You have this fight. Nobody's together. As long as people are separated, you can't, that the change that you want isn't going to happen. Mm. People unify, then the change that you want to happen happens. Mm. If you look at, if, if it, so, it was, it was. It, it, here's one. Shaq was talking with Candace Parker on TNT, right? So he was talking about women's basketball. I think women play San Antonio fundamental basketball. Right. Because when I watch basketball, I want to see people get up and down the floor. I want to see people ankles get broke. I want to see people get dunked on. I want to see the shoot from half court. Steph Curry shot Dame Lillard. Dame time. I, I want to see that. So Shaq was like, why don't you lower the rims and then speed the pace of the game up? And Candace got upset. She was like, my child will drop step dunk. Um, in the future or whatever she was saying. But in my head, I'm not going to pay attention to the goals being being lowered. I want to see somebody get dunked on. I want to see somebody get crossed up. Mm -hmm. So for me, for her to, and I get it, she wants, she want to have the same attention that the men have, but it's not a thing of it being women. This is a thing of, you got to make some changes in order for it to be more interesting or fast pace or up tempo because i want to see some action right it i think there's two different examples honestly like um because you know she's looking at it shaq's looking at it one way she's looking at it another way like shaq's looking at it a way to make the game more exciting where she's looking at it to where 
she wants to be on the same playing field as men. So why change it? Like we, we don't need to lower our standards. We actually need to evolve and, you know, step up to the standards or, or elevate our women standards as professionals. Um, I agree. But, but until, until you get there, it has to be something to segue you there. Because otherwise, when does it get to the point where it's more exciting and then people are just going to tune in for the excitement? Because they be hooping. I want unisex they basketball. They don't see. Huh? I want unisex basketball. And that, that's that's the thing I don't I, I want don't couples playing against couples. That's what I want. I want you couples want. playing against couples. I want locker room romance. I want that's <laughs> now that a hey you want hey, drama. <laughs> I'm there for that. Hey. Oh no, she did just drop thirty on him. Oh no! <laughs> hey, you, you want drama? You you want some drama? Spice it up for real, for real. No, nah, well, to, to your question, Will, is it by design? Mm. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's by design more so than it was reactionary, right? And, and what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes something happens, mm. and a smart person sees it, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, that's an opportunity." And then they take that and they run with it and make it something bigger than what it what it could have been, right? Because they saw the potential or the opportunity to either do something good or do something very bad to help themselves, right? So I think somebody, you know, I don't know. I can't sit here and say it was by design initially. I think it was picked up and then a plan was contrived to make it go farther than what it did. Mm. If that makes sense. Plan contrived. I'll, I'll say two things to that point. One, back in late 70s, I want to say, at the Vietnam War, you there used to be uh, some law in place in America where you had to have unbiased media. Walked a Conkrite and all of the Conkrite or Conkrite, whatever. This, that guy of, of that time period uh, essentially just gave you the news for what it was. Uh, then like the specifically, if I'm not mistaken, this if I'm not making uh messing this history up, the owner of Fox is the guy who kind of lobbied, you know, maybe paid some people, did got things done to get that changed, and then Fox takes off, and then you get CNN, MSN, MS, MSNBC coming behind it. That's the first thing. Uh, so it wasn't always like this, at least when we're talking about news where you only heard one side of the story second thing maybe not by design back in the 70s you know or whenever that 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 shift happened uh it started to divide you get desert storm you get all of these things that people start to have way different opinions about it based off the information and who they're getting the information from so now we have social media social media isn't just a, a ambiguous term these are tech companies that develop these apps that continue to develop these apps and maintain the servers and all. I don't have social media, so I'm not worried about getting kicked off of it because I'm not talking bad about them. But um, that develop these apps and these systems. And at the end of the day, do they benefit? Do they benefit off of people not agreeing based on their different sensitivities and tolerances? A hundred percent. And, and and that's what I mean by that. It's like, you know, when you when you got two parents and a kid, right? Mm-hmm. Like the kid mm-hmm. doesn't know any better when he pits the two yes. parents up against each other for the first time. So he's not designing that. But when he sees like, oh, there's a divide in the parents or she sees that there's a divide in the parents, that kid can play off of that and use it to their benefit. And that mm-hmm. And that's what I mean, like. You know, maybe the sensitivity wasn't by design, but it was more like, oh, man, you see that we can use that. And then, you know, they they, they even play into it more, you know. Um, but, to, you know, to, to that, my thing is, is it more is it that people are more sensitive? Is it or have people just gotten weaker throughout time? So that that's a that's a hell of a question. Yeah. So have people gotten sensitive 
more sensitive or weaker? Has America got more tolerant? You think what? Or has America got more tolerant? America, I don't think America has gotten more tolerant. I think America has just stopped talking. Like, now I'm more concerned. Before, I would just, this is how I feel, right? But now I'm more concerned about what's going to happen when I say how I feel. That Mm makes sense? Yes. So I don't know that they've gotten more tolerant. I think that they've kind of gone into hiding. It's kind of it's kind of like when Trump was in office at, before Trump was in office, the amount of um, the amount of uh, racist people, I guess, so to speak, or whatever. So you, you didn't have as many. But when he got in office, it was like, hey, well, that's that's my president. He's talking to me. Everybody just came out and it was just a thing like it don't matter. So now with everybody coming out, everybody saying how they feel or whatever, it just certain people were just quiet before. Now they're just coming out. It's, it is what it is. I can say whatever. And I'm going to have some people who back me because of social media. I think that's similar to that young lady talking about fat phobic. It's more people now. There are celebrities, uh, clothing lines uh um uh what's what's the what's what's rihanna's clothing line she got a clothing line i, I thought it was i thought it's she had savage, no savage by fenty 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 i know it's the, it was it's, makeup. the it's the makeup but anyway she has like an underwear line but she uses like she likes she to use does. a lot of different different types of uh body shapes and sizes to 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 accentuate you know so how this how her products look on different people. Uh, Victoria's Secret having plus size model. Remember uh, 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 America Next Top model back in the day, Takara being, uh, oh wow, I don't know if you guys remember Takara. I do remember Takara because I had a crush as a child. Yeah. Uh, but you know, even even seeing her as a t- at the time, that was kind of novel to see somebody with that body shape in that space and being you know celebrated at some level. Those people created a pathway for more people to express themselves about, hey, this is how I look right now. And this is how I want to be accepted right now. Yes, I can lose weight, but I want to be accepted right now. And and this is not based off of just how I feel about myself, but based on how we as Americans are celebrating Takara and um, the Adele's and like I said, the other, you know, other people, uh, other heavy set people. So. Um, but for issues like that, that's fine. If that, if you want, if you want to be celebrated for how you look, and you come out and you say whatever, that's a hundred percent cool. That's what I'm telling you. But on the flip side of that, <laughs> they got to be a hundred percent cool with a person who don't like it. You can't. Mm. No, you can't I don't. Be like, oh, you're wrong. No, I don't like that. It, it's it's no different than if a black woman or a black man says, I don't like, I don't, I don't, I like white women or white men. Good for you. Like, is it for me? It ain't for me, but if it's for you, fine, go do what you do. That's not a, it's not a wrong or right. It's a wrong or right for the individual. I, if, I think it comes down to like inclusion, right? People are sensitive because they want to be included and they don't like when they feel that other people don't have the same opinions as themselves or don't care to have the same opinions as themselves. Like you guys bring up that young lady who talked about, you know, fat phobic, you know, but she probably feels like that because she hasn't been included. So she's putting her opinion out and she's like sensitive that, you know, maybe other people don't feel the same way she does. Hey, but luckily for her, it's uh it's big girl summer. I don't know if you guys saw that that announcement about Lizzo. Oh, really? It's happening. It's this year. I think it was two years ago we had hot girl summer. Summer before, I mean last summer we had masks, masked up summer due to coronavirus. This summer, Lizzo claimed big girl summer. So But that you know, yeah. she can't claim big girl summer when she's sitting here, you know, one day she embraced how big she is and another day she crying because how big she is and she ain't getting looks like that don't make sense to me. Like, 
you know, if you're going to embrace your thickness, then don't get mad when somebody do not embrace your thickness. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, people have to be comfortable within themselves and understand just because you don't feel the way I do doesn't mean I have to get sensitive and get my panties in a bunch because you don't feel the same way I do. Yo, like, somebody will come at you because you said panties in a bunch. That's fine. Like, oh my God, he says panties in his bunch. He's being uh, toxic. At, non at Nostradamus man. underscore debate that. Hit me up. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. But you know what? I think I'm I'm a I'm a person who who likes to think about history on a timeline and also understanding that history is cyclical, so it's constantly revolving. We like to think of it as just a linear timeline, but it's constantly the same thing happening over and over again. Sensitivity, people being very specific about what they wanted to take in. And if you didn't think like me, then I don't want to hear it. I think that's that's a very human thing, not an American thing. That's a very human thing of throughout all time. You have small groups, tribal groups of people that all felt and thought the exact same type of way. And when somebody from an outside place came in to say, hey, have you heard about Jesus Christ? <laughs> you know what I mean? If, if Or if you, hey, have you heard about Buddha? You get hung because, you know, we only, we only rocking with Jesus over here. Uh, the progression, uh, the evolution of humans as a whole into these large societies and large countries and, and, and uh, nationalism as a whole made people or required people to pull back some of that stuff and say, hey, you now that we just drew an imaginary line around your land and now all y'all is America. Uh, you got some people over there that do this. You got some people over there to do this, do that. But y'all all American now. So when we go to war, hey, I'm American. Hey, when, I, when it's time to do this, I'm American. Now things like social media are starting to create, put people back in those small groups where they only want to hear what they've heard or what they what they feel comfortable in. And like I said, I don't think this is a new thing. I think it's a very, a very old thing, but we're talking about evolution. So now it might be a question of, are we devolving as humans, as a whole, as America? We realize the benefit of pulling those curtains back to get to where we need to, where we are now. But now it seems as though we're pulling it back on and, and becoming, uh, you know, isolated again and thought physically. Yeah. So I, I think I think there's people, especially with like companies nowadays, they have these uh these groups, these you know, equity inclusion groups where, you know, is 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 made for everybody. You know what I mean? So when you talk about progression, um did did the heightened sensitivity actually make things more inclusive and make things better to that way you know i you know we're gonna it's a group of us that feel this way that we invite everybody to be a part of if you want to be a part of our group that's fine but we just want to enlighten other people as to why we feel this way why we were so sensitive about it so that way you can start to understand and include us and and did that make us more open to other people's Thoughts, perspectives, opinions. Mm. Mm. That's a mm. that, that's a mm. lot. This, yeah. That's a lot to think about. I mean, this topic is so convoluted. There's so much going on here. It's expansive. Yeah, because it, it's it's a it's a lot there that people have to discuss and talk about. And to Will's point. I don't know. I think it's just coming back around that, okay, now these small groups are happening and then over time things will change and go back to what we what were, we experienced and then it'll change again. So this, this fight will be forever, but for something else, it'll continuously happen. It's just one of those things. You can't be so LGBTQIA if you want if you want that inclusion, you have to see it from both sides and you can't. So you got to 
some people may not be there yet. So you got to allow them to get there. The worst thing you could do is to try to force it on somebody if they don't want to accept it. And then to be like, you're homophobic or something like that will take it even further. So if, if you want, if you want that shift to happen for you, then allow people to understand, allow people to get there in, in, in their time. Now, if, if, if they're out here killing people and all of that, that's different. But in, in certain situations on certain things that you want, if you want something to happen, you gotta allow people to get there. You gotta have conversations with people so they can understand. Otherwise, you're gonna feel like they're forcing it on you and they're gonna naturally push back. Which which makes it a little bit more difficult for you to get what you want done. But I I, I don't know. It, it's with with all of that stuff and with everything that's happening. You got to be able to. For me, you just got to be able to see the other side. I go watch. Like I said, I go watch Fox News to see what they talking about over there. But they just as mad as the left. So if, if you mean how, how do you how do you get to a point where everybody's where you can have an honest conversation about something and and you can be, I would rather a person be honest with me than just, yeah, give me lip service. Hmm. But that's me. You know, that ain't everybody. What if somebody gave you a hard truth? A uncomfortable, something, and maybe maybe not, I, mean, I can't really give you an example of something that might make you feel uncomfortable. But somebody, something that, something that touches me is if I were to hear the story of a child, a female child that was sex trafficked or something like that, mm -hmm it changes the way I view this hypersensitivity. I'll give you, I'll give you a great example. Uh, the Aisha Curry story really quick, the Aisha Curry thing with uh, her going on some uh, show and just speaking on how she felt um, less attractive and as though a lot of women are attracted to her, her husband and not, she doesn't get approached by men as much. Um, originally on the house, uh, originally I thought at a very low level Oh, she's a married woman. Why she's looking for that type of attention, so on and so forth. It took me hearing the opinion of a friend that had a child that said she was going through the exact same thing when she had her son. That uh, it, it was hard for her to feel, you know, attracted, attractive as a whole, and so on and so forth. That me taking the time to hear the opposite side opinion especially for somebody that I knew personally gave me the insight to realize, Oh, she, you know, Aisha not being hypersensitive. She's just talking about her experience and back to, you know, what you originally said all the way back uh, in the beginning about you seeing p women in a particular position and wanting to help. We're talking about people having particular life experiences and their actions, thoughts and behaviors being based off of that. I mean, that's that's what the sensitivity comes down to yeah and even with that story with aisha curry i i i understood what she was saying mm -hmm. it don't i don't mean i have to agree with it yeah. i just understand where you're coming from yeah so i can understand where you're coming from and not agree with you yeah and and that works for her. Like that may be something that she needs because I can get it. I, I, her, her husband's in the spotlight all the time. This dude is, it, he, at this point, you know, he wanted to mo one of the most um, recognizable faces in the NBA. At some point, you know, he's not gonna be as famous, but right now she's not on that stage. So, in my head, it's like, okay, I see why he gets all the attention because he's an NBA player, he's a good NBA player, and so he's um, popular. So I see why he's getting all the attention. I'm not an NBA player. I'm, I'm not that recognized, so forth and so on. And so I get why I'm not that popular. And on the flip side, I mean, I don't think, you know, I'm just not, it, it, she's married. I'm married as a single man. I'm just not going to be all over this man's wife. I think she was, I think, yeah, no, I, all of your points, but I think she was expressing just like, you know, what I was saying about if I heard something very, if I have, you know, uh, 
some negative thoughts about women. And then I hear something very specific from somebody that experienced something that I would never want for my child, my, any women in my family. Uh, sometimes this sensitivity is coming from people saying hard stuff that the rest of us ain't ready to hear. I think that a lot, a lot of Caucasians in America that align, you know, with the right and conservative, uh, conservative, conservatives think that we as African Americans talking about anything is being sensitive. But to us, and to anybody that's went through the same experiences as us, they they feel it wholeheartedly. It's not, uh, it's not you not getting too sensitive talking about Tulsa, Oklahoma, or blah, 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 blah. That's you talking about the truth that's uncomfortable to you. And because it's uncomfortable to you, you call us being sensitive for even wanting to bring it up. Not yeah, that. and, and I, I think it depends on what it is because in, in, in those situations, you know, they they might be, they might not be ready to have those conversations. So it's not that, you know, you're, you're sensitive, you know, it's just that they're not ready, but you know, I think when we look at it, it's like you got to understand there's levels to it. You know what I mean? Like what's important? You know what I mean? Because I might be sensitive about something, but the next person might be going through something that's, you know, way worse. For example, you know, LeBron James, he said he had PTSD from playing in the Orlando bubble, you know, last year, last season. But when you look at it, it's like you was in one of the safest place, if not the safest place on earth at that moment right but you got real soldiers that been to war and been shot at and been blown up who got like real ptsd so how can you compare being in this bubble you know to somebody else who had ptsd so there's levels to it and you gotta understand like the levels of sensitivity to other people based on what you're saying or based on how they feel about something spectrums there is a spectrum and you can't disregard that there's a spectrum. There isn't a hundred percent this or a zero percent that is a level in between. Uh, homophobic, something a conversation me and um, uh, Jason have had before, Jay's had before, um, in regards to this, you know, similar conversation. There is a spectrum for homophobia. Some of us, uh, as Americans might feel, hey, you know, I might, I don't really feel comfortable seeing this or seeing that being displayed on TV or so on and so forth. While other people with that exact same, you know, general feeling want to beat somebody up or, you know, uh, bully them based on what they, what they, what they want to do or what they are, you know what I mean? Uh, their sexual preference. Uh, and that's also comes from your life experience. Somebody being uncomfortable with it and want to change the channel, not let their kids watch it, might just be, uh, you know, grew up in a Christian church, hey, that's not right, whatever, whatever, however they feel. But somebody that's going to go and hurt somebody over what they do and who they do it with uh, might have been beat themselves uh, when they were younger. They might have uh, grown up in a highly homophobic uh, uh, environment growing up. So when they ate a hot dog regularly to me, I'm a grown, I'm a grown man. I eat a hot dog like this. I don't eat a hot dog from the side. I've heard people make whole, have whole conversations about how they don't eat anything that's phallus shaped, you know, uh, directly for whatever reason. I tell me, I think that's hyper homophobia. I don't, I don't isn't that, it's not that deep to me, but to them, what they grew up in, that's what it is. And that's what it was. And, and they got, you know, they got, um, they got told, and I speak from personal experience. I mean, personal experience. Honestly, I grew up in you know uh, a place where when I was growing up, everything was being gay was you know you don't want to do that. Uh, the F word uh, related to that that what's the name was used all the time, but it wasn't even always just about sexuality. It was just anything that was weak as a boy. It was that, and that's a spectrum of you know a homophobia and something I would have to unlearn. Or I have learned to, you know, to realize that, you know, even saying the F word isn't, it's not cool. If you know the history or whatever. So at that point with, with that is just, you know, I can see how that can hurt somebody else. So I can, I can rock with you on that and just be like, I'm just not going to use it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, but that's a, you know, that's a choice that I made. 
but it it is it like you said it is a spectrum because it just don't it don't bother me it like i had a um <laughs> i've had a gay dude tell me you look nice you're cute or whatever thank you i'm not gay I'm just keep it moving i appreciate it it's a compliment nonetheless but for some people that is just like the wrong thing to say. It doesn't bother me. I got a wife at home. I'm chilling. I'm good. But I appreciate the compliment, bro. I keep it moving. I don't. I don't rock that way. But to you know, to each his own. And I just keep it moving. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me. It don't make me feel any type of way. I'm gonna eat my hot dogs. How I eat my hot dogs. My bananas. Whatever. If somebody else feel is that bad, I it is. Mm. I'm gonna eat my banana in front of you too. <laughs> so it don't. Is nail in a coffin? And we talking about understanding what other people because you 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 talked about it well about seeing where the other person come from the six and the nine is when you see hyper hypersensitivity in America these groups should that be a warning sign to us who are not trying to be that sensitive to say hey let's delve into that and figure out where they're coming from on that side not to go and agree and change your mindset but just so you can have some more understanding. So maybe us labeling things as super sensitive will deplete more. We'll, we'll so, go down. Yeah, and I think you have to go to the other side. That's what you're saying, right? I think you yeah. gotta go to the other side and get an understanding. In the Bible, it always talks about get understanding all through Proverbs, yeah. get understanding, because from that, from that understanding that you get that what whatever 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 is being told to you becomes knowledge and then you have to apply stuff to get understanding right so when you applying it to get that understanding it doesn't necessarily mean that again i have to agree with it but i understand where the other person's coming from so i could that that's what allows me to be in a room with somebody who supports trump because i'm not a trump supporter right but that that's what allows me to be in a room with somebody who does support trump the question is, well, why? And I got a homeboy who voted for Trump because of his business and things that he had going on for himself. I totally get it. It's, but, and then you got to look, then there's other people that you listen to and you hear and you're like, what are you saying? There's no way for me to understand the stuff that you're saying. I hear what you're saying but it doesn't make any sense. Those people, I just keep my distance. But I have to understand where a person is coming from uh, when we're talking about a topic. That way, I just know where to place people at that point. Because mm -hmm. it could come down to a situation. I don't want to be around the person that when it comes down to a certain situation, them jokers about to throw me under the bus, roll over me and then back up. So I got to keep myself away. I got to keep myself in a certain position. So for me, um, I just need to understand the other side so I know where to place myself. So at the end of the day, I mean, to me, that's what it is. Final thoughts. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. But you got you the guest. So go ahead, Will. What you think? Final thoughts. Uh, I think that uh, hypersensitivity, I mean, sensitivity in America being too sensitive is a very good question for the time that we're in right now and a very good and that conversation that might come behind it is a very good uh idea of the path forward and what, what what we might experience in the future for not just for ourselves as we you know continue to get older but uh for those of us who have children and um loved ones that are younger than us that are coming up um i think that having this conversation at home you know taking it spreading it uh, it's a, it, it, it might not get just like in this, you know, what we're doing here it necessarily get wrapped up or get uh, tied around I mean, uh, wrapped in uh, a way that it was just uh, clear and concise to one particular answer but at the end of the day, it got a conversation going um, and that conversation I think will help, you know help people so for me I think this topic is a topic that needs to be discussed. It is America too sensitive? Who's to say? But we need to understand the other side. 
Like if a person has a certain view, then you need to understand their view. And though you, you whether you agree with it or not, just having the understanding when somebody else asks you that question, then you can say, oh, well, I spoke to a person and here's and here's what they said. That helps for other people to understand. But if you're just in this echo chamber and you're not trying to hear anything else, there's no growth that happens because most of the growth happens through opposition. So with that being said, have the conversation, talk to people, figure it out together. And then from there, keep moving. And that's how we get past this whole sensitivity thing. But, you know, people are still going to be sensitive about stuff. So it is what it is. But have the conversation. Namstradamus, what you got? Well, who who can answer the question, is America too sensitive as me? And I'm going to say, hell yes. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because, you know, you might be feeling a certain way about something and you have the right to feel that way. And it might be totally legitimate, but somebody next to you or to somebody else is having a worse day and they're going through worse experiences. So you being sensitive or feeling a certain way about what you're going through in retrospect, might not be as bad as what somebody else went through but at the same time having that sensitivity you know brought about some change to where there's more recognition for certain things so is america too, too sensitive sure but did it help did it bring out some changes that were necessary sure so i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and um is america too sensitive have the conversation with your wife, with your kids, with your aunt, your uncle, your mom, your dad, your grandmother, niece, nephews. Have the conversation and talk about it because there's things that may be bothering them that you guys may be able to understand, get past. And some things I ain't trying to get past, but that's cool. Anyway, comment below, like, subscribe, share. And until next time, thank you for tuning in. We out. And I'm not doing all the nays stuff. So I let it. Bye. 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 You got to do the wave, bro. Bye. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Boom. We uh, out. Back on the prime. Remember the times I'm feeling like Michael. I'm feeling like Michael. Taking a stand, creating a plan, and beating the cycle. Beating the cycle. We got a whole lot of work we got to do. We got to do. Give me the raw. Give me the real. Just give me the truth. Give me the truth. Start a conversation. Then let the world debate it. Breath the fresh air coming through just like ventilation. And no boy, let me tell you about the squad. About the squad. A dream team, so you know they coming hard. coming hard. Now first up, let me tell you about Jay. You know he wise, man. That boy got knowledge for days. Check out his mind. Then we got Sean coming through like Thanos. Keep him in line. He's a quiet storm, but don't get it twisted. You see the grind. And next up, we gotta talk about Nate. You know she slay. She got the brains and the beauty plus strength to keep him straight. And last but not least, we got Nostradamus. He's the voice of the people, so he'll keep it popping. My squad gon' keep it 100, and that's all facts. They're here to spark the conversation. Now you debate now that. You debate that. You debate that.